the second part of the lab you will get to do some hands-on exercise on scientific measurement so the topic of the lecture 2 was the scientific measurement right so I hope you had the chance to review over the lecture topics so anyway uh, there are different types of scientific measurements and the first one was the weight measurement <clears throat> So the gravity force applied to an object was the weight we defined that, right? You use normally balances to measure the weight of different kinds. There aren't that many uh, mechanical balances out there, but, you know, uh, maybe a decades ago there were so many mechanical balances you had to know, uh, you had to learn how, how to use mechanical balances. But since they are kind of outdated, I'm going to skip them and I'm going to move on to the electronic balances. They are much more user-friendly. Electronic balances is to use, is to maintain, of course. So, uh, electronic balances will come with different uh, weight range each, measure, each can measure. So you need to check the weighing range of electronic balances. Some of them are defined as analytical balance. Did you understand what is the definition of analytical balance? So it can measure sensitively up to 0.1 milligram, then it will be defined as analytical balance, right? So understand that. Uh, so when you use an electronic balance, first thing you need to do is the condition, checking the condition of the analytical balance. Of course, you need to check if your balance is set on the level surface. You know, normally a balance should have a level gauge, you know, the liquid with a kind of circle in the middle, and there should be air bubble. If it's on the level surface, that air bubble should be kept inside of the uh, uh, circle. You know, if it is not on the level surface then maybe air bubble should be it will be outside of the circle or you may be touching it so you uh, you need to adjust the lag of the balance to make sure that um, the air bubble should be located inside of the circle okay that's how you can check the level and once that's done then you will have to go through the calibration uh, process of course for that you need the weight standard maybe 500 gram place that and then um, the calibration process uh, should take place and it depends on the balance the calibration process may be a little different there may be different buttons you need to press so consult with your SOP or use your guide instruction manual to, uh, to go through uh, the thorough calibration process so uh, for the practice of analytical balance how you use it you're going to do the exercise number two which will ask you to use analytical balance a number of times okay and then second important part is the volumetric measurement. Of course, there are different types of volumetric measuring devices out there, except for the beakers and all of my flasks. Those are containers, not the volumetric devices, but things like graduate cylinders, micro pipettes, burettes, volumetric flasks, those are true volumetric uh, dev measuring devices that are so accurate. And understand which one you will grab to measure certain volumes, right? So take a look at different types of volumetric devices we have in the lab and make sure that you know how to use those, especially when you measure the volume, understanding how you deal with the meniscus, right? Because liquid has certain cohesion or adhesion. So the surface level may not be flat. You may have, you know, indentation in the middle of the liquid surface. You always read from the bottom level of the liquid surface, right? And the micro are one of the volumetric devices you'll be using a lot throughout the semester. So I want you to practice how you use a micropipetter. We talked about that in the la lecture. So you'll get to use that in the lab for the first lab. Okay. We have different uh, size micropipetters. P1000 that can measure up to 1000 microliter. P200 that can measure up to 200 microliter. P20 that can measure up to uh, 20 microliter. And there is P2 that can measure up to 2 microliter. So understand the unique range of each micropipetter. So you, did, you can determine which micropipetter you will be using for your measurement, right? And then uh, I'm going to give you a handout. Uh, which is a copy of your textbook, uh, pages 361 and 364. It is posted in your course shell, uh, so you can take a look at those pages if you don't have your textbook. Anyway, by following the instruction written on those pages, you can validate your micropipetter, okay, by setting up your mic micropipetter at a certain volume. If it's a 500 microliter, that's fine for P1000, set it up and then you will uh, make a measurement with the pure water in, in our lab it's a nano pure water that's pure to so grab a bottle of nano pure water and then you pipette the same volume 500 microliter about 
10 times or 6 times in a container. The container could, could be a weighing dish or it could be a micro centrifuge tube, whichever you, you like to use, that's fine. You just make sure that you do the calculation so you're going to exclude the weight of the weighing dish or weight of the, you know, micro centrifuge tube to, to, uh, calculate uh, the weight of the water. Okay. Once that's done, you, you get the average um, weight of the water you measured and then you consider the density of your water at that particular temperature and then convert that weight back to the volume and then once you do that you can <coughs> calculate out the percent accuracy okay uh, so that will tell you how accurate your pipe measurement is was and then standard deviation of your maybe 10 measurements okay how close they were that shows the consistency in your measurement or preciseness in your measurement. So if you read them over, you will be able to carry out this task. This is a, a main task that's going to take about, I don't know, one hour or so. I want you to follow the uh, process thoroughly and gather all the numbers, number of me your measurement and do the calculation. And then based on that data, you'll be writing your first lab report. Okay, If you haven't written a lab report, there's a guide that's uh, how to write a lab report posted in your course shell and then grading rubric for your lab report is also posted so your lab first lab report is 25 points worth so you will be uploading it in your course shell okay Temperature measurement, okay, it's typically done with the thermometers, thermometers of different kinds. Uh, you're not going to get to do that in the lab, uh, but we'll have some uh, thermometers that are available in our lab. You can take a look at those if you want to. And then the next thing you will do is the pH measurement. I'm sure you have used the pH meter of some kind, so please refresh your memory and then understand how you use a pH meter because you will get to write your SOP. So if you're not quite sure how you use a pH meter, just uh, grab an instructor's manual that is available in the lab and take a look at it and understand the step-by-step -step process. Whenever you use your pH meter, first thing you need to do is what? Plug it in, warm it up, and then while it is being warm warming up, then what? You need to check the condition of the electrode, pH electrode, and see if it's stored in the right storage solution. And if the electrode is dried out, if there are so much salt uh, crystal precipitation in there or not, if it is, then you have to wash it out, uh, uh, refresh the electrode. And then once that's done, then you have to go through what? Go through the calibration process. Calibration should be done using two different standards. You always start your calibration with what pH? It's always pH 7 because that neutral, neutral is set up pH 7 equals 0 millivolt. Once that's done, you will move to maybe a higher pH, pH 10 or pH 4. Depends on what range you're going to ma make your uh, pH measurement at. So two point calibration is needed. Okay. After the two point calibration, your pH meter will tell you the slope. Slope is normally the conversion of millivoltage to a pH value. So it's going to be certain millivoltage per one pH change. So your, your slope should be higher than at least like 93 millivoltage per pH value. So if that's the case, then your pH meter is calibrated. Okay. So I want you to go through the calibration and then have your pH meter ready. And once you have the pH meter ready, and then I want you to determine three unknown solutions pH values. Okay, that is the last uh, lab task you need to perform for the lab one. Okay, so there are three main tasks you need to perform. The, th the th task number three was the pH calibration on your pH meter and the determine the pH value of three different solutions. And the task two was what is this micro pipette validation? It's going to take a while, about one hour by taking about 10 different measurements, 10 measurements of the same volume of water, pure water, and then you need to calculate standard deviation, percent accuracy, all those things based on the guideline, and you'll be writing a lab report based on that. And the first task was um, writing an SOP, but that's a homework, homework assignment, so you don't have to write during the lab. Just gather the material you need to complete the task. So that will be your lab number one.